Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at this new lead time trolling motor, 100 amp hour, 12.8 LiPo 4 battery. So lead time did contact me and asked if I would like to review their trolling motor version of their 100 amp hour uh, battery. And I was a little bit intrigued by that because I didn't really fully understand what constituted a trolling motor versus one of these regular 100 amp hour batteries. So I agreed to it, they sent it out to me and I did some testing on it. But first things first, they call this a trolling motor, which I think is a little bit of a weird name for it, I guess, because it's a typical standard 100 amp hour, 12.8 volt battery. It does have a few features in it that are a little bit different than their standard battery. So number one, they claim that this has a low temp cutoff feature built into the BMS. So if it gets below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, this battery is not supposed to be able to charge. We're gonna test that out. And the other thing is, this has a 100 amp BMS, so you can continuously discharge whatever you're gonna be discharging at up to 100 amps. I think what makes this the trolling motor version is that it's got a three to 500 amp capacity for discharge for about five seconds, which in theory could help that trolling motor get started. Now it's not gonna run three to 500 amps for, for longer than three to five seconds, but it is supposed to provide enough load capacity to get those trolling motors started, which is I believe why they kind of call this thing a trolling motor version. I don't know, I think that, that name's a little bit odd, but those are the two main differences between this battery and say the regular lead time standard 100 amp hour 12.8 volt battery. This comes in at $369 on lead time's website. So that kind of puts it right into the average ballpark of a lot of other lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now, if it does well in the testing, I think it might be a decent choice because just to get that low temp cutoff feature, because that's very useful for people up north that are gonna be using these batteries in the cold, in the RV, in a fishing shack, out near solar shed in Michigan, I don't know, wherever, wherever you're gonna use these things because you really don't wanna charge these things below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. There's many videos on YouTube where people do charge these things below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. However, there is a pretty large risk that it will damage the batteries if you do it. So if you can find a battery that has low temp cutoff feature, I do recommend getting that even if you don't think you'll ever need it. It's just good to have it in here. So let's just get to testing and make sure that uh, this battery performs to all of its specs and to make sure that it might be worth your 369 bucks. Okay, and yes, I do realize the top of my head is cut off, but the main focus of this video is the battery and my new testing station that I just built. So we're going to be testing the capacity or the rated capacity of this battery. Now, again, this is rated at 100 amp hours or 1280 watt hours. So the purpose of this test is to make sure that if you buy this battery, you're going to get at least 100 amp hours. So I've got my incandescent light bulb already hooked up to my inverter. But I do want to show you the app settings so far. So on that Juan Vaughn little shunt app, you can see I've been zero amp hours discharged. My battery is at 100 and I'm sitting at 13.64 volts for that battery. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get this inverter cut on. And we're going to run this light bulb array, which is pulling 310 watts. I'm gonna let this battery run completely dry and come back and check the amount of amp hours I was able to get pulled out of it. All right, so it looks like we were able to get 103.4 amp hours pulled out of this new lead time battery, which is pretty good. Again, it's rated for 100 amps. So one thing I wanted to show you folks real quick on this app, on the shunt app, is that right now you can see that I'm inputting around 250 watts. I have the positive charger hooked up to the positive battery terminal and the negative to the shunt. Now when I turn on this incandescent light bulb array, you'll see it switch over pretty instantly. So lights are on, I am still charging. However, it does switch over to a load icon and it's only showing 61 watts. That's because I'm inputting 250 and this light array is over 300 watts. So it is draining the battery, but at only 61 watts. Now, if I turn this light off, it goes back to charging and now it's showing that I'm inputting again around 250 watts. So pretty cool little app for around again, 60 bucks for this shunt, not too bad but I'm gonna get this battery charged up and then we're gonna do, make sure that it can run at least 100 amps for a few minutes 
and then see if we can push it up to around 150, 160 amps, just for a few brief seconds. I don't wanna, I don't wanna run these batteries that high of amperage for a long time. It's just not safe for anyone involved. So you can tell by the screenshot here, we are sitting at obviously zero power. So I'm gonna cut this heat gun on. Start off low. And I'm pulling 62 amps, nothing, child's play. Let me bump this thing up. There's 125 amps. 1580 watts. Boom. Okay, so that is the battery actually disconnecting, not my inverter. My inverter could handle that load. So let's cut this inverter off. Let's cut the heat gun off. So it maintained around 125 amps for five to 10 seconds maybe. Okay, had to reconnect my shunt after everything just died, but we are now again pulling 61.4 amps. And now it looks like I've got to stay pretty close to around the 100 amp setting. So I'm gonna kick it up high. And I'm gonna to try to dial it into around 100 amps. Let's see if we can keep it there, if it'll kinda of settle down a little bit. That's 1200 watts. 97, almost 98 amps. Let me get this uh, clock started here. And let's see if we can run this setting, this load, for about 10 minutes. Well, I actually went a little above 10 minutes. We're at 13 minutes and 56 seconds, and it's running fine off of 102-ish amps. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit and see if we can get this thing to, this battery to shut off again. 126, 128 amps. That's the max I can get out of this heat gun is 128 amps and it just shut off. So it looks like it's real happy around 100 to 102 amps running continuously. It will accept more than that for, for again, about five seconds. But if you need to run anything over 100 amps for a, for a long period of time, this BMS is going to shut itself down. Now, we are going to use this depleted battery now to test to see if it does in fact have low temp charge protection. So I'm gonna let this thing kind of settle down, cool down a little bit, and I'm gonna go throw it in my chest freezer and let it sit overnight and come back tomorrow and see if we can make it accept a charge. Okay gang, so moment of truth here. I've got the charger connected via the positive post on the battery. I've got the negative here. I'm gonna connect it to the shunt now and see if we get a charge. So hopefully you can see I've got a red and a green light on this charger. The fans are not going, it is not charging, but let me show you the app here. So the battery is connected to this shunt app and it actually has the little lightning icon right there, but I am not inputting any power. So I've got to say that this new trolling motor <laughs> version of the battery does in fact support low temp charging cutoff. So that is a very good thing, especially for people that are gonna be using these batteries way up north or in colder climates. Um, you don't necessarily wanna charge your lithium batteries below freezing. You can discharge them below freezing, but it is not recommended to charge these things up when it's below freezing. And luckily it appears, at least in my case, that this battery does support low temp cutoff. So cool. Kudos to lead time for putting that in finally. Okay. So that concludes the testing folks. So for 369 bucks, you're going to get a battery that does have low temp cutoff feature built into it. It did work. I can confirm this battery the case, at least on the outside, was sitting at around three degrees Fahrenheit. It doesn't have an internal Bluetooth monitoring app, so I couldn't really tell how cold those cells were inside, but the case was three degrees and it didn't charge when I hooked it up. So I can pretty much guarantee that at least my version does have low temp cutoff protection built into it, which is always a bonus, especially if you're gonna be using these batteries up in the, the northern areas, the colder climates 
because you don't want to charge below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It did continuously discharge my load, which was around 98 to 102 amps pulling off of it. As soon as I got to around 128 amps for over five seconds, it did cut off. Some people might say that's a bad thing that, that aren't really familiar with these batteries, but it's actually a good thing because you don't want these batteries to burn themselves up. You want that BMS to actually work and do its job. And if it detects too much of a discharge load, it cuts itself off, protecting those prismatic cells in here. So that is a good thing that the battery cut itself off. So I'll give that a pass too. And the fact that I was able to get 104-ish amp hours off of the discharge capacity test proves that you actually get a little bit more for your money if you want to look at it that way than the rated 100 amp hours that is on the battery so overall the battery did really well lead time is a pretty well-known brand it used to be ampere time now it's lead time um, their their mini battery is great i've got one of their 200 amp hour batteries it did great i, I think that they're a pretty reputable brand i know there's a hundred thousand different of these battery manufacturers now but lead time's been around i think a lot of people know them so i think you could have a little bit of confidence at least in this brand versus some brand new no name brand no one's ever heard of that's just my opinion only but they're all probably coming from the same factory um, so, but anyway, folks, that is the, my review on this lead time trolling motor version of the battery. Now I did check Amazon and I did check lead times website to, to make sure that I got the right price on this thing. And I did It's $369. However, they are out of stock as of right now. They claim on their website that they will be back in stock on August the 30th. Who knows if that's true or not, but if you try to go buy one tomorrow, Sorry, it appears that they are out of stock and they're not even available on Amazon right now. But if you are interested, just, you know, check around the end of August to see if they are available. So, folks, thanks for watching. Take care. And until next time, we will see you soon.